the news you can use today. We're going to talk about the uh, last quarter's flipping profits in the U.S. Uh, CNBC always does a study as to how much uh, the flippers are making. The number has been slowly declining. It peaked from uh, the second quarter of 2020. Uh, the average home in the U.S. it was flipped netted 60 netted seventy thousand dollars in the second quarter. Uh, the second quarter of this year, ending June, it had dropped to thirty eight thousand dollars, sixty eight thousand dollars, excuse me. And then the quarter um, that I'm sorry, that was the March quarter. I'm stumbling today. Uh, the quarter that ended uh, at the end of June was a $67,000 national average. The average profit went from about 40% of the sale price down to 33 and a third. These are still spectacular numbers. When I started in the business back when they just had invented dirt, uh, the average profit was something like twelve dollars or $15,000. And it wasn't even called flipping at that point. It was if you were a contractor and you could buy a house and needed some work, you could make money on it. There was no wholesale business then. This was back in 1999. And, uh, you know, these numbers are pretty spectacular still, although everybody's complaining about, you know, we can't make as much money and so on and so forth. A lot of this has to do with the inflationary issues, which we talked about on last Thursday's call. We'll probably talk a little bit more about next, this coming Thursday as well, but they've listed the cities where the best returns for flippers have occurred during the second quarter this year. So let me get your pencils out and get ready to write this down. These are the best markets if you're gonna flip a house to be in. Number one, uh, actually let's go from, uh, let's go from number seven up to number one. We'll do this in reverse order. Uh, the seventh best city to uh, be in, in terms of flips was Baltimore, Maryland. Uh, Baltimore has been a good market for a long time. I've been involved in that market for a while. Uh, number six, Buffalo, New York. And by, by good, I mean, in the case of Buffalo, New York, um, they made about a 93% return on their investment. So if they spent $100,000, they got the 100 back, plus they made 93 more. So that's, those are good returns. Philadelphia, uh, number five, and I've, uh, we just recently did a deal in Philadelphia. 100% uh, return on investment. So they spent 100,000 on a rehab and they made 100,000 back in addition to the first 100 being paid. Number four, Omaha, Nebraska. Number three, uh, unfortunately a place where I have a number of rental properties, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Uh, although the, the results were outstanding, 154% of the money they put into a rehab they made back. Uh, number two, Fargo, Oklahoma, uh, Fargo, North Dakota, Fargo, North Dakota. And number one, uh, and I, I was surprised to see this, but it's because the market is a low cost market, but Oklahoma City. So it's low cost, but it's strong. That was the best place during the second quarter of this year to flip a property, Oklahoma City, 196%. So they spent $100,000 on a rehab. Um, they got a check back for almost 300,000. They made their 100 back, plus they made 200 more. So outstanding returns. Let's talk about the uh, five worst cities in the U.S. Um, the, uh, the, the fifth worst is uh, Dauphin, Alabama, uh, about 8.5%. So they spent $100,000. They made 108 back. They got their 100 plus 8,500 more. Longview, Texas, fourth worst place, 7% um, return. College Station, Texas, we're, we're seeing a trend here, aren't we? Texas, not, not a good place to rehab. College Station, Texas, 1% return. So they spent $100,000 and made 101. They got their 100 back plus 1,000. Uh, second worst place, Corpus Christi, Texas, 7 tenths of 1% return. So they spent $100,000, they made $700. And the worst place in the US, the only place that actually lost money, uh, Gulfport, Mississippi. So you spent $100,000, you got 92 back. You didn't even make your 100 back. So those would be areas I would think that you would wanna stay out of. Um, now these things change uh, fairly dramatically. I remember last year, probably this time last year where Boise was in the top four or five. Right now, Boise is overpriced by about 30%. So in other words, 
you know, the, the overbid situation is 30% over what the real market value is. Um, and so I wouldn't, I wouldn't invest there. And, you know, some of these things, everybody swarms to them. So probably there's, you know, a million and a half investors going to Oklahoma City, Fargo, North Dakota, and Pittsburgh right now. Um, I, I, frankly, I'm getting a lot of offers for my Pittsburgh properties, uh, which are pieces of crap and generally boarded up, but the guys will pay, you know, overpay for that stuff just to have the opportunity to, to rehab uh, something. So uh, interesting markets out there. Uh, there's still money to be made and there always will be money to be made in the flipping side of the business if you know what you're doing um, and you're in a good market and you've really got to be ahead of the wave on this thing and it, it's kind of hard to predict. I couldn't even begin to guess where some of the better markets would be this next year. Realtor.com always puts out a list once a year uh, and some of the other sources and say, okay, here's where we think the market's gonna be best for flipping. Generally, they're horrendously wrong, um, but you end up, what happens is you end up getting a lot of investors that'll go out and buy and pay cash overpay for properties like Boise and then put a renter in there rather than flip. And so that just tends to screw up the market. So. Um, I would suspect that the markets I just listed uh, here by this time next year will be bad. Some of the bad ones will be good, and it's a whole new ball game. Uh, but right now, Texas doesn't look to be a good place to be flipping properties, or even the South for that matter. Alabama, Texas, Mississippi, they look, uh, look a little difficult. Um, some of the Northeast areas, center part and the Northern parts, with the exception of Oklahoma City, uh, look to be good. Baltimore, Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, uh, Buffalo, New York, you know, these kind of things, Fargo, North Dakota. So, you know, flipping looks good in those areas and the South, not so good. So anyway, but in all of these areas, you can always make a ton of money by using seller finance type transaction, which is really kind of what we specialize in, although we will help you do anything um, you know, where we really recommend uh, that you make your money is out there with seller finance type transactions. In fact, I don't know if the horns are on here, um, but they just posted in the pipeline group here a few days ago, wasn't it actually that uh, they, I don't remember how much they made total, 40, 50,000. Like 25, 26,000 on Plus the enough. back end, but then there was like, I think there was an initial 10, 10 or 15 K on the front also. Yeah. So, and that's with no, basically no money out of pocket. So, you know, these are always good ways to go. Um, you know, and I, I would encourage everybody to work, uh, work those angles. Um, let's go ahead and go to the questions. Mitzi asked, um, where did we say it got 300%? Um, it was, uh, I think it was Oklahoma city, wasn't it? Yeah. Oklahoma city, 196% yeah. return. So, 100% means you get all your money back um, double and then 96% um, on top of that. So if they spent $100,000 on a rehab, they ended up getting a check back for net um, $296,000, which means they netted one hundred ninety-six dollars on $100,000 investments. Pretty good deal. That would, you know, but keep in mind the average house in Oklahoma City probably sells for 150 maybe for the average nice house so that means you know they bought it for 20 you know spent 40 and you know sold it for 160 or something like that so um you know it, it's not it's not it's percentage wise it's not real terms it's not real real dollars like that it's the example i gave you is using 100,000 and you're making 196 that's not a probably a realistic number for Oklahoma City or some of these others, Fargo, North Dakota, for sure. Uh, <clears throat> one of the reasons Fargo is, was on the list is that, you know, it's been a big oil boom the last 10 years or so. And a lot of these landlords are flying out of Fargo and some of these other North Dakota cities and stuff that was worth 150,000 recently. Now they're selling these things for 20 just to get out. Well, the getting out's good. So um, you know, you just, you have to almost watch the news and you have to predict in advance where these markets are now, you know, of course we do that on these calls. We try and give you guys some, some heads up and show you kind of where to look and, and those kind of things. But, uh, 
it never hurts to pick up the Wall Street Journal, you know, look at Market Watch, uh, CNBC, those kind of things, and try and predict ahead of time where where this uh, trend is going to be moving. So.